Hello. This video demonstrates the process designers and builders must use to determine wind classifications for a site when using AS4055, the Australian standard wind loads for housing. The correct wind classification is essential if a building is to avoid damage from wind. For example, if a house is built with details that are just one wind classification lower than the site requires, in a design wind event the load on the tie downs will be double their capacity. Another video in this series outlines in detail the steps used in AS4055 to obtain the wind classification for houses. This video shows an example of how they're used. A wind classification is required for every new house or major building work on an existing house. This example shows how to evaluate the wind classification for an existing house prior to an extension. The extended house fits within the limitations on size and shape in AS4055. The first step is to determine which wind region the town is in. The house in this example is located in Perth. Therefore, from figure 2.1 of AS4055, it can be seen that the relevant wind region is region A. The second step is to assess the terrain category. Satellite imagery was used to check the terrain within 500 metres of the site. There are no plans for further development within this circle, so in five years' time terrain and shielding will be the same. There are no bodies of water within the circle. There are some open spaces such as parks, but they are all smaller than 250,000 square metres. The largest park is 150 metres by 150 metres, or 22,500 square metres. Therefore, the site is classified as terrain category 3. The third step is to evaluate the topographic classification. First, focus on the hill. A contour map helps define the features of the hill. On this map, the contours are very faint, but will be highlighted where we need them. The red dot is the house, and it is at 41 metres Australian height datum. The blue dot is the top of the hill at 48 metres. The orange dot is the bottom of the hill at 6 metres. The height of the hill, therefore, is 48 minus 6 metres, which equals 42 metres. Then mark the contour around the mid-height of the hill, and measure the shortest distance between the top of the hill and that contour. The half-height contour is midway between the top and the bottom of the hill at 27 metres. This is the blue contour shown on the map. The shortest distance between the top of the hill and the mid-height contour is 280 metres and is shown as a red arrow. The calculated slope is half the hill height divided by the shortest distance from the top of the hill to the mid-height contour. In this example it is 21 divided by 280 metres which equals 1 on 13.3. So the slope is 1 in 13. The hill height is 42 metres. So one third of the hill height is 42 divided by 3, which is 14 metres. The top third of the hill will be at 48 metres minus 14 metres, which equals 34 metres. Therefore, houses in the top third of the hill will be higher than 34 metres. The red dot is the house site, and it is at a height of 41 metres. As the site is above 34 metres, it is in the top third of the hill. Table 2.3 of AS4055 shows that for a slope of 1 in 13, between 1 in 10 and 1 in 20, and in the top third of a hill higher than 30 metres, the topographic classification is T1. Step 4 is determining the shielding for the site. This house has two rows of houses on three sides, but a park across the road. Therefore, the house is considered to have no shielding. So far, we have worked through steps 1 to 4 and have the basic information to look up the wind classification. Step 5 is to use table 2.2 of AS4055 to determine the wind classification for the site from the wind region, the terrain category, the topographic classification and the shielding class. For this example, table 2.2 shows that for wind region A, terrain category 3, Topographic class T1, with no shielding, the wind classification for the house is N2. In this case, the terrain category is the same in all directions, but
but the steepest slope and the most open shielding are in different directions. Wind classifications determined using AS4055 are not directional. They are the same for wind in any direction. As a check, the view from the site is open, but not over the whole suburb, so N2 seems appropriate. This video has illustrated the steps presented in AS4055 for finding the wind classification for houses. The wind classification can then be used to select appropriate framing member sizes, bracing configurations, connection requirements, wall and roof cladding fixings, windows and structural details to construct a house that will withstand the expected winds in this location. This example used online satellite imagery and contour maps. Regardless of what you use, it is recommended that you visit the site to check the view and to confirm that the site classification calculated looks reasonable. If you would like more information on calculating wind classification for a site, another video is available that provides additional information on terrain categories, topography and shielding.